Hey, Rick. <laughs> it's time to add some power. It's maybe my least favorite machine. Just kidding. It's a good unit. It's unbelievable, dude. So right here, you guys have seen this. This is a legendary machine, the highest viewed machine on our channel, dude. Except, well, JP's probably going to beat that. But anyway, beast mode. So. <laughs> As you guys know, Beast Mode's been running a uh, Desert Storm 420 kit for a while. We did some clutch upgrades to hold the power. We've had this crazy billet intake on here. we got this crazy 3-inch turboback Magnus exhaust from Evo Magnus. on there. We've got a lot of old stuff too. So we have one of their older intercoolers. We have an old tune on it. It's time to go big. Rich, what's going on? Big Dogsville. So like you said, big boy turbo. I don't know if you want to say the horsepower number or not. Let's do it. But it's big. Real, real big. So we're talking over 500 horsepower. Use, uh, using this turbo here. So this is a bigger compressor housing than what's on there. This is bigger than the Desert Storm Turbo. Yeah, much bigger. Like, I wish we had one just to set next to. We will shortly, but it's big. Real big. We know about that. Big dog. <laughs> big dog. <laughs> big dog. So what else do we got? Uh, new Evo intercooler. This is their high efficiency uh, race core intercooler. So real nice piece. Um, thing I do like about this is it fits in the factory location where the OG Blizzard one like you got in here set up kind of higher. This one you can reuse the, you know, the plastic ducting if you wanted to. So a little really? bit more stealth. We don't have that on this, so not a, not an applicable issue. Um, but then this, this what is we got? a real piece of hardware here. Pull that out, pull that out dude. So what are we looking at here? I see a cylinder head. It looks shiny. So you like shiny things, right? I love shiny things. Big shine guy. <laughs> Big shine guy. Ooh, ooh. So, so what, what is this? This is there. I think it's the stage two ported head. I think it's got, is it two millimeter bigger valves than stock? Yeah, I want to say they were plus twos. Yeah, plus twos on the intake and plus ones on the exhaust. All CNC ported. And even look at the, like the head is like inside of here. It's all done up and polished real nice. The valves are all beautiful. So all it, the flow. Yeah. Gonna move some air. Lots of air. Let's see. Let's see the intake pocket. Ooh, ooh, so beautiful. So all CNC done. This is something that they do on their super high horsepower builds, and uh, that's kind of what we're going for here. So what we're doing a little yeah. bit differently though than what they uh, recommend. They recommend a pretty comprehensive engine build. So this unit here has uh, forged pistons and rods in it, CP units, good stuff. Um, but they recommend a lot more. Like at minimum, you should have a sleeved block. <laughs> Lots of stuff done on the bottom end. Are we doing that? No. No, we're not. No, so we're lucky that Evo allows us to get this kind of stuff and then run this and potentially blow it up and see what happens. So we're always on the edge of having their new stuff. We had their launch control way before anybody else. And we do a lot of testing. Sometimes it goes right. Actually, so far it's been going very right. Yeah, so far it's been good, man. And so yeah, we're not gonna have a total built bottom end. We might do some special stuff, but uh, you know, we're just, we're right on the precipice of those types of parts being available. And the big issue is a lot of the stuff is not readily available and we just can't wait to send this thing. So we're gonna put it together with a couple little special tweaks and uh, just see what happens. Should be fun. Yeah, so. I'm into that. Well, let's rip it apart. Yep. <laughs> Leo, you got pretty deep here. Uh, what did you find out? Oh, I'll tell you what you found out. That air filter don't work, dude. <laughs> Listen, 100%. So uh, yeah, we had one of these. Custom hate dude. to do this. I would say it's not made for fine dust particulates. Yeah. So it's this blue brand. Don't look too close at it. Anyway, check this out. It's gone, thanks junk. Check this out, where's the intercooler, Nick? There it is. This is the inlet side of the intercooler. See that dust in there? Dude, not dude, good, see that? Not good. But the outside of it, not as bad. So maybe some of the dust is in there. But anyway, yeah, so we got this thing tore down. Before we go totally crazy and take the cylinder head off and do all that stuff, we're going to do a leak down test. And what that will tell us is how much pressure the cylinder will hold when it's in a uh, compressed state. What's your so, guess on that? If it's under 10% on each cylinder, that'd be great. I think, uh, so basically what you do is you add air into each cylinder. And then uh, there's a little gauge that accounts for how much air is leaking out. So there are spots where it can leak out from. It can be the exhaust valves. It can be the intake valves. It can be through the piston rings. So I think spec on this engine's like replacement or R and R spec is like 17% leak down. What was it? Uh, do you remember what it was when we did redo this motor? 
the first time we checked leak down with the new cylinder head, I think it was less than 10 on each cylinder, okay. like five or something. Do you remember those numbers, Doug? Uh, leak down was like three or four percent, I think. On the new cylinder head? On the new cylinder head, yeah. Okay, got pretty it. Pretty tight. So. Okay, that's good. Probably gonna be higher. How much higher? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, probably a lot higher. Maybe if we had one of these giant air filters, that wouldn't be the case. Just sticking a foot over the <laughs> roof. You should do it for sure. You can I, have this one if you want. <laughs> come on, man. This is the best anyway. You guys are all dumb. So, uh, yeah, what we're going to do now is take uh, the coil packs off, the spark plugs out, yeah. and uh, prepare this thing for a little leak down. Yeah. We'll give you those numbers when we get them. Uh, yeah. It's only from high, so my big fat neck doesn't look Sorry, good. dude. Thank you, man. Uh, are you recording? Oh, yeah. Red light. Okay, so we did take apart the top part of the engine. We got all our spark plugs up here. They all look pretty good. Yeah. Surprisingly, they're a bit moist. I think the E85 might have brought some moisture into this situation. But So we got all the coils off. We got all the wiring harness off. And we're about to pop the uh, valve cover off and set the cylinder number one to close to top dead center, probably right before it, uh, and make sure the valves are closed so we can do this freaking pop it. leak down. Hey, pop it. So I did actually pop this off once, so it's not going to make any satisfying sounds. but. Here, let's Oof. recreate the pop sound. All right, boys, this is uh, our first part of our leak down tester. So you thread this down in the spark plug hole with the piston right before top dead center. If it's after top dead center, the pressure can push the piston back down, which isn't what you want. You want to have it close to the top, but not past top dead center. So we checked that using a pick on top of the piston. Nick watched it as I turned over the uh, over the engine and also made sure the valves were closed so there's no lobes on the camshaft touching any of the buckets so we know the valves are closed. So what we'll do here is we'll thread this down in. There's an O-ring and a, uh, I guess like a threaded thing with the same threads as on the spark plug. We'll plug this into our tester which is over here and what this does is introduces a uh, controlled amount of pressure into the engine and then we'll see how much is leaving. So if it's leaving that's probably through exhaust valves or worn piston rings or something else bad, a chip piston or something like that. We're hoping for 10% or less, so I think we'll set it to roughly 60 pounds. And, 80, uh, 80 is what we did before. 80 pounds? Okay. And then we'll uh, hope for more than 72 on the way out. So. Look at Nick Seuss down there working. This is a four-man operation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, get okay. some really cheap yeah. fittings from yeah. Harbor Freight that are, look good but actually are really hard to connect. Dude, those are Merlins. How dare First you? First step. They don't actually clip in. Really. Twist it! I mean, I bopped it, twisted, and pulled it. Okay, so here we go. This is set up in. This has got a regulator built into it here. We'll add the pressure here. We'll go up to 80. This is the pressure uh, on the other side in here. Hopefully it shows 72 or higher. Cross your fingers. This could take your arm off, Nick Seuss. Be careful. No. I got it, dude. Okay, there's definitely some leakage, but not crazy amount. Wow. Very interesting sound. So yeah, we're at 80 pounds here. Oh, See, it told you it took his arm off. <laughs> Turns out he was right. <laughs> it's a lot of power. <laughs> okay, so what we did see in here, though, is that it looks like it's roughly 10% leak down, and we also saw some air coming out around the buckets, meaning the exhaust valves are leaking. I wouldn't say incredibly bad, but. I mean, could have been a lot worse. This motor has seen some stuff. I mean, yep. it, had, it has had straight, no old bar beat downs on it. I mean, just the big burnouts. Over boosting. Over boosting, over temperature, yep. running it. So honestly, to be at 10%, she's done a real good job. So maybe we should do like a uh, holder on that clutch so we can make sure it doesn't kick over anymore. Is your finger okay? She's good. You get cut? Already lost one, dude. Let's I'm all set. He took the tip right off. Are oh, you okay? Good. Yeah, no, it's good. All right. We'll try to position the next couple better. All right, so we're on to cylinder number, cylinder number three. So cylinder number one was 76 PSI versus 80. Yeah, so that would be 10% would be... That's 5% That's 5 leak down. Leak down. That's awesome. On cylinder number one, it was 79 on cylinder number two. So you're basically talking like 1% leak down. Yeah, pretty much. Just crazy this one's a little bit worse okay so yeah, this one's at 10 percent the far cylinder's at 10 percent so okay what you can see if you can zoom in here i don't know if you can get it from that angle is this little uh the bubbling coming out around the uh bucket on the exhaust side and basically all that is is just air leaking by 
the uh, exhaust valves. There it is, right there. Which is fine, because we're getting a new head. Yeah, and I mean, on an engine like this, big turbo, a lot of heat, a lot of two-step, not that crazy to see. 11 seconds of two-step at some point. <laughs> a little bit coming by the exhaust valves, and this is on a dead cold engine. So honestly, I would say the bottom end of this thing is healthy, which oh, is she's good to go. pretty wild considering what it's been through. What good engines. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. So at this point, that basically allows us to be able to continue and do what we're going to be doing. So we're going to take the uh, cam, whatever you call this thing, the cam container. Carrier. Out. Yep, we'll uh, loosen up the uh, tensioner for the cam chain, and then we'll start taking the uh, head bolts or head studs out. Heck yeah, dude. We're getting this thing ready for some 11 millimeter head studs. <laughs> big dogs. Right, give me a big dog. Big dog. Right. All right, guys, we're back. We got the cams and the cam whatever container thing out. So one thing that did happen that was sort of interesting is I was able to walk the uh, cam chain off and then uh, loosen the cam cover. And I was or not the cam cover, but the cam container. When I was doing that, the uh, cams actually snapped back into a spot where they weren't compressing any of the uh, valves. So that was cool. Made removing that pretty easy. Uh, obviously, we'll retime it when everything's back together. So not a big deal. The chain sitting down there, but. We're to the point where we can take these uh, nuts off of the head studs. <laughs> Rogue wrench. Rogue wrench, okay, Rogue wrench. it's time. Yeah, so it's time to pull the head off. We got the uh, head studs uh, unnutted. Uh, one of them came with, so we're gonna have just a Rogue stud. Hey, yeah. brother. That's okay. And uh, yeah, we're about to see the top of the pistons for the first time, so hopefully they are good. I kept the turbo attached to the cylinder head so I can unbolt that stuff easier on the bench, and I've also already loosened up the cylinder head and coolant has gone. Everywhere. Everywhere. That's so, all right. Uh, I think at this point we're ready just to pull her straight off. Arrgh, Heck dude. yeah. A little beef to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, yeah, obviously this turbo's ingested a lot because that air filter was junk. So if you come down here and look, you can see she's seen some stuff. But these are really, really nice turbos. These are actually made by Zona Rotor and they are beautiful. And uh, yeah, no interaction between the impeller yeah. and the compressor housing, so we're good there. Tiny bit of shaft play that'll go away with some oil pressure. Yeah, you see a little evidence, you know, you see the yeah. evidence that it was ingesting some stuff, but overall, that's yeah. a usable turbo that I think is destined for uh, another machine of ours. Or something. Uh, all right, back to the pistons, though. Let's check these bad boys out. So, okay. we get some coolant on top of them, which happens when you pop the head gasket, unfortunately. Maybe we could have dropped the coolant first, but didn't think about it. That's all right. We'll drain her all go, go. They look pretty good. I mean, yeah. First glance, they all look fairly even. Yeah. It looks like the head gasket was doing pretty okay. Yeah, head gasket's great. That sealing surface between each cylinder looks good. Yeah. I don't immediately see any uh, damage on the cylinder walls, which we didn't expect after the leak down. Right. No, it looks good. There's a tiny bit of carbon buildup, which you'll expect, but man, this thing lived okay. a very hard life, like Doug was saying and it was put together with subpar stuff. So the stuff that we're putting into it now is going to be so much stronger and so much better. We're probably gonna end up getting into the limit of the actual cylinder block itself and starting to warp and do weird stuff. So that'll be uh, maybe pay attention to later for now. <laughs> we're just gonna get some drills and uh, some taps for aluminum. Get them big dogs yeah. in there. Big dogs. One week later. All right, Doug, it's a few days later. Got this thing up, fully taken apart. Got the coolant out of it because you know what? You got some wacky ideas. We're doing some special stuff here. So at the power levels we're going to with this thing, we're gonna surpass the point where it seems that the industry thinks the stock block is good. So two choices, now well, there's three choices. One is to just put it together with the big head studs, send it, if the block breaks, it breaks, we take it apart and, and fix it. Two would be to do a really nice fix, and there's a couple options, machining the block out, getting special sleeves, or Evo's got a billet block that's coming. The problem with those options is they're not really available yet. Can't get our hands on the good sleeves in a short amount of time. The billet blocks aren't ready to go yet. So we got sort of an intermediate solution. Kind of a thing that's, maybe overlooked i don't know we're gonna try it out so this is a old basically an old school hardcore drag racer trick which is to cement <laughs> the block so if you haven't heard of this yet what guys do and this is you know pretty common still in automotive drag racing is they take cement and it's not like home depot cement we bought this stuff from summit 
and you fill the water jackets of the block and it just stiffens everything up. It stiffens the cylinder walls so they don't deflect, so they ideally don't crack, holds a better shape, so you know, get a little bit more power by holding that shape and keeping some compression in there. We're gonna give it a run on an X3 and see if it works. So basically what we're gonna do is kind of called like a three quarter fill. So instead of filling the block entirely up and having no coolant flow through it, we're gonna block the coolant ports off. We're gonna fill the jackets up about three quarters of the way and that'll stiffen the cylinder walls but still allow coolant to flow up across the top of the jackets and into the head. So we'll maintain the coolant system, we'll maintain what I think will still be real good cooling capability. This thing running on E85 has never run hot anyways, but we'll end up with a stronger block. So it's a bit of a science experiment. I'm not aware of anybody doing this on an X3 before, which is why it's a perfect thing for us to do. <laughs> yeah, so. absolutely. So uh, yeah, we were going to use grout, but turns out um, there's better solutions available. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Some tile grout from Lowe's. Yeah. That's kind of disappointing because I already had a really good catchphrase for this thing. Yes, yeah, say the catchphrase. <laughs> Grout will make it stout. <laughs> yeah, it adds up. <laughs> Maybe it would work. I don't know, but we've got this, what's it called? Hard block? Yeah, hard block, yeah. yeah. Hard block compound. So basically we're going to finish cleaning the, uh, the coolant out of the jackets. I'm going to make some, I think, just cardboard block offs for the ports down into the water pump. And then we're going to mix some of that stuff up and uh, just pour it in the engine. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if uh, you use cement, it won't let it get bent. Think about yeah. that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. Last thing you want to do is get bent. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we're gonna do, we're gonna do that. We'll let that set up, and then uh, we've got all the tools here to do the uh, cylinder studs to drill and tap the block for cylinders for the new head studs. Um, you know, we'll show you that when we get there. We got some special tools to try to do as good a job as we can by hand without having a mill here, you know, to be able to pull the block out and do it super nicely, but we'll get her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, let's just see that happen, I guess, huh? You hold. What in the hell? What in the hell? Oh my gosh. We're making a- uh, Got some Doug Fab. You might consider progress, so. We've uh, got some cardboard plugs made and stuck over the water jackets in the block, sealed up with some grease. So I think we're good there. All the water jackets are cleaned out. And uh, yeah, took a funnel and uh, modified it. Basically crunched the end down so it would fit in the water jackets. And Smart. We're getting ready to mix this stuff up and pour it in the block, but it says you gotta like really vigorously mix it for five minutes. They recommend using like power mixer, which we don't have. So we're just gonna make one <laughs> real quick. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, so I got a bolt that's gonna go on the drill. We're just gonna weld a little freaking plate on the end, bend the ends a little bit, smooth them out. Perfect. Power mixer, so. Gonna get real here in a minute. I guess now is probably a good time to just state the obvious that this is 100% not a how-to <laughs> video no. whatsoever. This is very experimental. So yeah, there are people that spend their entire lives figuring out how to make this engine live, and we're spending roughly 30 minutes. Yeah, we'll let you know so. some amount of time from now whether this works or not. But <laughs> yeah, you'll know. Just gonna take a drink of that, but man, there are some floaties in that sucker. So we have our mixing vessel, uh, and and it looks a lot like smaller things I've seen recently. Anyway, oof. Um, moving on. Good thing here is we have a lot of this stuff, so we can experiment with a couple mixes if we if we need to. But I think basically we just got to mix this stuff up to a consistency where it will flow through this, which yeah. is pretty. It's gonna be pretty thin, probably thinner than normal. But it's like a Zon Seven. I'm try something like That's that. That's probably good, yeah. See how she does. Just do a little. It was basically my old job, it's mixing chemicals. So. Did we need this power mixer for this job? No. I would go not. slow. There you go. So just give her full beans. Yeah, with the unfortunately shaped mixing vessel here, but. I mean, we'll get her. She's mixing up all right. There's some stuff in the corner you're not going to be able to get, unfortunately. We'll get her at some point. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. It's getting We're going full cowboy now. This is <laughs> real cowboy. Pretty ridiculous overall, but yeah, over the fender. Trying to keep it mixed up. It's maybe more water than it should be, but whatever. She's coming, brother. Alright. Oh 
Oh yeah, she's flowing right in there. I'm gonna have to work it in a little bit, but I'll just move around and look at that over there. Oh my goodness! Listen, I'll be the first one to admit this is ghetto, ghetto. Where are you putting this on the bunk scale? <laughs> um, what's the maximum level of bunk? Uh, let's do some thinking real quick. I mean, we've done a lot of bunk things. There's, I mean, numerically one to ten bunk scale. So ten's the number one bunk. Yeah, it's probably like one under that, like nine, <laughs> nine point three bunk. Pretty bunk. You know what? I feel it, like it's gonna work though. It looks like we got more than we wanted. Uh, it's working in some. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I see some bubbles, but not much. Yeah, it's gone down a little bit, but we got like a like a seven ninths fill. Yeah, we might want to peel a little off the top. Five sevenths fill. We have like forty minutes to work with it. Probably a little more since we went with more water than is typical. But I mean, overall, I think we did a halfway decent job. Yep. All you really need to get through in life is a halfway decent job at whatever you're doing. Like, as long as you just don't half-ass every single thing that you do, yeah. you'll get somewhere. It's not hard. Most people, big half-assers, though. Most people that say they do really good jobs aren't actually doing that, so. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hey, we'll get it. So, are you going to need, like, uh, the Ghoul or the XRSDS to, like, tow you to the strip, or you think you're going to be able to drive it there? No, I think when you, when you kind of fill in the cooling jackets around the cylinder. You still have head cooling. This way you might get some more uh, oil temperature, but I think overall it's not going to be that big of a difference anyway compared to what it was. It always ran really cool regardless. So, <laughs> Well, there she is, boys. The, I mean, maybe world's first uh, filled X3 block. There wasn't much cooling jacket there, but there's definitely less now. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to stiffen up the top part of the cylinders, you know, stabilize everything up there, which can't be a bad thing, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. It's pretty ridiculous, but I think there's uh, probably a solid 40% chance that it's going to work. Yeah, I was near the 35 area, so, ah, so we're in agreement good. then. Yeah. I mean, what's going to really happen? It's going to harden up. It's going to flow less coolant. It's probably not going to overheat. Life will go on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's just going to make more power now and right. just be the thing to do going forward. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I think we have to cover this thing up and then uh, let it sit for a while and just come back later. Yeah, probably it's going to sit uh, at least overnight now. We've got stuff going on tomorrow, so... I'll give it some time to harden up and then uh, we'll go in and do the head studs and throw the sucker back together. All right, I'll see you then. All right. We are back. A couple days later, the uh, block cement is all solid solidified. We were able to pull the uh, cardboard plugs out. Everything looks good there, so we're still gonna have coolant passage up to the top of the deck and through the head and then back to the water pump. So everything looks really good. We'll clean that up a little bit before we uh, bolt the head on but now that that's solid it's time to get these big head studs in so this is a head stud that came out of it that's a nine millimeter arp we are going to an 11 millimeter so you can see a lot beefier unit now the studs that we were able to get our hands on you can see are quite a bit longer so we're gonna have to do a little something there to make them work but i measured the height this morning we're gonna be able to make it happen. I think uh, the plan is just to bury the stud in the block as far as we can, and then we'll probably have to trim a little bit of thread off it, but because it's a longer thread, we should still be fine. We're still gonna end up with more thread engagement than what we had with the original studs, and obviously there'll be a larger diameter. So we'll make those work, that's gonna be okay. We talked about this a little bit before. Since we're doing this by hand, we don't have a mill here, so we're not gonna pull the block out and do it that way. We've got a couple of special tools. So this is just a drill guide. We're gonna clamp that onto the top of the deck, hold it down on the top of the deck just to help us get the drill bit and a ream and a tap started straight in the hole. So 
uh, the process is going to be this basically going to drill it out we got a few different size drill bits that are very close um, so we can trial them uh, when you're hand drilling with a twist drill you're going to get a little bit oversized holes so we got a couple options there we're going to leave some material and then our final uh, operation before running the tap is going to be a ream and we're doing that because the tap we're using is very sensitive to the diameter so we want to make sure we've got a nice straight well tolerance hole so we're going to drill out close with a regular drill we're going to run the ream through to get a real nice hole and then we're coming in with this bad boy which is a see if it'll focus there it won't anyways that is a chipless forming tap so as opposed to a normal cutting tap where it's cutting material away to make the thread this is actually going to move the aluminum move the material up into the thread so it's a forming operation so the hole that you drill for this is larger than a standard tap hole and then this grabs the material pulls it out into the thread to form the thread and what you end up with is a much tighter stronger thread that way so we want to make sure this thing's not pulling studs out lifting the head and we really give her the beans so we got everything here we should need just going to uh, set up a little time lapse and we'll see how it goes So head is all torqued down. It went really well. Uh, we went to 70 foot pound on these. We were at, I believe, 55 before. So we've got quite a bit more clamp force now. Plus we've got studs in there that are quite a bit less likely to stretch under load. So really happy. They torqued up really nice, felt rock solid. We let them sit. We did a retorque on them. Everything's really good. So just basic assembly at this point. We're gonna get the cams back in her and start throwing the rest of it back together so we can get this sucker uh, fired up. One eternity later. Jumping ahead many days, weeks, perhaps. I have basically lived another life during the time in which this has started and now that it's ending today. Yeah, I mean, last time we worked on this thing was prior to the Limolis race. In Florida, it was prior to Cletus and Cars, yeah. the mud ride, just weeks. We've been on the road, but this bad boy is back together. So while we were gone, Mikey came in, buttoned up all the little details. Uh, we haven't rolled it over yet. So the only thing that's left to do is see if it will start. Right, so this will need a new tune with this giant turbo. We've added a lot of things. So I'm not sure if we talked about the intercooler. Did we talk about that? Anyway. Who's to say at this point? I think so, but. New badass Evo race intercooler. I'm trying to think what else has changed really. Just the big turbo, the big intercooler. We'll have to do a lot of tune changes. We'll have to do some clutch changes because that thing was yeah. already on the rev limiter as it was and that's not good. But for now, you'll just start it. Yo. But yeah, man, what else happened? Oh, I mean, head studs. Oh, we did big head block. studs. Yeah, we cemented the block. <laughs> Put some oh, grout in there, dude. This Why? is uh, overall gonna be interesting. See if she'll come to life. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right. Promising. Heck yeah. Whew. I mean. That's a lot of changes for it to fire up. That's a quick fire up. That was wow, really good. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, the old Magnus just breathing fire. Can't see a lot in there. It's an X3 engine. Yeah, so we're going to push this thing to above 500 crank horsepower. So before, it was probably around 400. Uh, but now we're going way past that. Above 
ability yeah. to do a bunch of clutching here at the shop is pretty bad. It's pretty minimal. It's basically just a mud fest out there. So we're going to do the best we can to guess it, to set up, get a tune in it, drive it all the way across the country, and send it. That's pretty normal for this car, though. <laughs> this was like the Nick Seuss of drag cars for a while. Getting no love. Actually, got a lot of love. Anyway, moving on. Having said that, I think I'm going to let this thing heat up, and then we'll just uh, talk a little bit in a second. Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, not many times you start something up and for the first time there's not a single leak. It's just running <laughs> great. It looks good. Uh, can't thank you guys enough. So huge thanks to Doug. Huge thanks to, man, who else? Evo, obviously, for the giant turbo. We got the new Stage 2 race head on this thing. CNC port, no. plus two intake valves, plus one exhaust valves. That's going to be crazy. Big dog. Man, thanks to uh, everybody that's watching out there. Like, honestly, Killing I can't it. afford this stuff. Doug can't afford this stuff. Heck no, dude. <laughs> but uh, we got some good sponsors on board to get this thing ripping and show you guys what this stuff can do. So thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, buying parts from Rick. Where is he at? Look at him over there. He's probably selling parts right now. There he is. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, yeah. cam camera doesn't like Rick right now. Yeah, if you want He's to, over there, though. If you want to rip. So Rick has already gone to rip mode on this. I'm not sure how much we've covered, but Rick is also chasing the coattails of beast mode with what he's doing with his. And we still oh, haven't, we still rich, haven't figured out what mode. Nick is doing, but he's doing something. Something's happening. A lot of things are happening Rick, around the shop. What is Nick doing? I'm not being a loser. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of things happening around the shop. Maybe it's a good time to talk about quickly. I don't know if it'll be up and operational yet, but yeah. uh, we're gonna go ahead and start covering all the little things that we miss in these main videos these days because yep. everything is escalated to the point where. The main videos we try to just do banger stuff, you know. Cool so stuff, all the stuff. little things that are happening around the shop that we used to cover back in the day don't get covered as much. So for that, going forward, go yes. over and check out Side by Side Blog Garage. Basically, was our parts channel. We're gonna yep. change the name. It's gonna be Side by Side Blog Garage. It's gonna have all the, uh, you know, well, the little details, the, the day to day stuff. stuff around the shop. You guys should like that. It'll be fun. So. There's a ton of good stuff in there, and uh, that's something that we talked about doing too because we hate to get away from the camaraderie of the situation because that stuff's still happening but we're also still going to florida and california and whatever the hell else we're doing all the time so right we'll cover the big stuff on the main channel we'll cover the fun stuff on the garage channel so link below for that and uh yeah thanks again everybody for making this uh dream come true that we're trying to put forward here and keep watching and liking we got more cool stuff coming like doug says three times a week for the next foreseeable future <laughs> <laughs> and uh what else man i don't know rick you got anything over there yeah appreciate you hey yeah appreciate him appreciate nick you got anything hey really appreciate you hey he's appreciating everybody and i appreciate you guys so right. see you again appreciate you okay see ya